I go through the thought experiment of, I like cl- thinking about clones. Uh, like, like twins, twins are clones, basically. I, mm-hmm. Basically, I but twi- um, the ability to generate, I mean, you're stuck with the, those clones. Like, like, the, the twins is a fixed number of clones, so that's a genetic clone. Mm-hmm. I mean, a philosophical clone where you can keep generating them. Versions. And then I, the reason I really like that construction, thinking about that, like for me personally is it, nicely encapsulates how I feel about being human because why do I matter? If I'm, how would I, if I do another copy of me, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how would I defend uh, why I matter as a human being? And I don't think I can, because that clone if it's is just fine. Clone. It's a, not even a perfect, like a reasonable clone. Like most people I know, um, that love me and who I love, they'll be just fine with the clone. <laughs> they'd be like, and some they'll be surprised, like, oh, you're like, your <laughs> your move kind of weird, but like overall, <laughs> but otherwise, uh, I'll take it. Yeah. And if that's possible to do that kind of copying, hmm. and, and no, I don't want to say perfect clone because I think perfect clone is very difficult engineering wise. I mean, like a pretty crappy copy would still be okay for just like the... where's suits a lot <laughs> has a weird way of talking i mean i think there's a lot of elements there like uh you know in the in the digital space especially with the metaverse yeah um you can clone i think you know in the next few decades you'll be able to clone people's behavioral patterns uh, pretty well yeah and visual uh the, is at least in the in the virtual reality in the digital representation of you are and then you have to really contend with like, why do I matter? Is maybe what matters isn't the individual person, but what matters are the ideas that that person plays with. Hmm. Um, so it doesn't matter if there's a thousand clones. What matters is that I'm currently thinking about X or some kind of problem that I'm trying to solve. And those ideas, and I'm sharing those ideas, maybe ideas are the organisms and not the the meat vehicles of the organism. Maybe that's a cultural shift where we won't necessarily treat any one body as fundamentally uh, unique or important, but the sort of, the ideas that those bodies play with. I mean, that sounds crazy. <laughs> no, it's, it's abstract, abstract <laughs> but, but very relevant. Derek Parfit wrote this great book called Reasons and Persons about how you really define an individual as not just your own thoughts and your own self-reflection, but we're almost, he argues, more defined by how other people have seen it. See, like, if you walked out into the world and say suddenly nobody knew who you were, recognized you. You would be in, in some regards uh, deceased, right? If no one, if everyone just suddenly had massive amnesia and you just didn't, no one knew who you are and never remembered, no memory of anything you'd ever done together, you'd be very alone. You'd be basically, you know, starting from scratch, like as if you'd just been born, basically. So, you, and also he writes thought experiments, like what if half of your neurons get replaced with half of someone else or a quarter or 60%? At what point do you stop being you and become that other person? And the argument he makes is it's more than just what percentage of your neurons are swapped out. It's also the relationships you have with so many people that partly define you. No, not completely, but they're a key component of how you view yourself, how they view what you are in the world. And you know, and he actually goes so far to say that they're probably you know more important than even what's in your head. Like if you swap out you know all of your thoughts, but when you walk out into the world, everyone still treats to you and talks to you the same way as this mm-hmm. memory of what you are. That is so like an entity that's defined you, even if all of your you know, there's there's even movies like uh, Trading Spaces about this with Eddie Murphy. Or like the ideas of people who can swap bodies. Uh, the reason those are comedy is because they're fish out of water comedies. And but but they go to the point of what defines you is not just you, but also how you're viewed. Well, you as an entity exist in the memories of other yeah, of other yeah. beings, and so that yeah, the 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 entities as they exist in their form in those memories perhaps are more important to who you are than what's in your head. And, and so, that the clones then are, um, how do they, do they lessen? Not really. They just distribute, they just scale the you-ness that can be experienced by other humans. Like if I could be doing five podcasts right now at the same yeah. time, then in theory, but I'd have to re- have some way to transmit the memory of which one I did, which would be hard, but not impossible if it's all digital. You could aggregate and accrete more and more of the memories into one entity. Oh, I see. But I yeah. thought at the at, at the moment of cloning, it's like cloning a Git repository, yeah. then you're no branched. longer yeah. is branched. You share 
you share the version V1 of Chris that a lot of people have experienced, like your, your high school friends, college friends, yeah. colleagues, and so on. But now you moved on to your music career yeah. and the, one of your clones did. <laughs> yeah, right. And then that that's fundamentally new experiences that you, you still, um, your colleagues can still experience the memories of the old the Chris, one. but the new one is totally, you're going to have new communities experiencing and connecting yeah. to those. And then you can just, propagate and the ones that are don't get a lot of likes on social media we can we can like quietly dispose of we want to maximize is the clones of chris that can uh get a lot of likes on facebook